This week there's been an announcement that there's a new company trying to enter the power meter market with what's called a resonant strain gauge. So let's just add some little vibration symbols here. A resonant strain gauge is a relatively new technology. Based on the limited amount of video and press release and uh, other information available, I can pretty much explain to you at least what the basic theory is likely for a resonant strain gauge. Before I can explain any of this, I need to explain to you a quick background on how a pedal-based power meter like Garmin Vector or Lux power pedals work. Essentially you have an axle like this and you have a pedal body that surrounds it. So you have an interface here and here as well as here and here. And then I apply a force from a foot. What happens is the pedal starts to deflect. So, so this eventually bends a little bit. And it deflects over here as well, a little bit. Looking directly at this pedal axle, we'll make it a little bit bigger. We've applied a force, and it's we know that it's going to deflect. And based on my previous videos, we know that this side will compress a little bit, and using something like strain gauge where it contracts and the wires get shorter and the resist down on this side and the resistance this lengthens and the resistance goes up on this side we can figure out what's the force hanging off here and that makes sense but really the force from pedals are, are acting in a couple of places. So what they've done is they've made the axle housing predictable and they've actually instrumented inside. So your housing deflects and then there's a smaller, more sensitive beam inside that can expand and contract. And that's great, except for one little problem. Uh, it's called moment rejection. If you have a long thin arm and you apply force in the, this direction, you get deflection in this direction, allowing you to get strain gauge readings. That's great. But what happens if you have a moment? Let's say I just had a screwdriver and I'm trying to twist here. I'm not causing a force, I'm just causing a bending moment, but it's essentially like if I did this, but that too will cause a bowing. And if I have a strain gauge in one location, say here and here, um, it can't tell the difference between twisting and a direct force. With pedaling and a power meter, we're trying to measure the force perpendicular to the crank. So what happens then is if we if we cause this twisting, you can cause that exact same twisting by an increased pedal offset or torquing your ankle. Both Garmin and Look have instrumented their pedals in such a way that it eliminates this bending moment. So what they've done is they've created what's called a differential bending bridge. If I was to put a strain gauge a known distance apart from one each other or a whole uh, a, a full set uh, a full Wheatstone bridge set up known distance from each other and I apply a force well this is going to give me a strain reading here and this one will give me a higher strain reading here yeah, sorry, let's say that's there and knowing those two things and knowing the distance I know a slope. 
This slope correlates very well to the force. It decreases sensitivity a little bit, but that's okay. However, if I were to apply a moment, what happens is these both get offset and they both go up. So what we end up happening is we have an offset and then we get this strain here. But the slope, the slope stayed the same. So I can be torquing my ankle and it just offsets, but I'm only measuring the, what the slope is. This is how Garmin Vector works, is that it's only measuring the slope. It has, it has a total of eight strain gauges, so two men, two, uh, well, sorry, four that measure in one axis in, uh, along this plane, and then one perpendicular, one set of four that's perpendicular out of plane. So you need, you need the two to do a temperature compensation, at least, and you, and you need another pair to allow for a differential bridge, and then you have to have two in the other axis, and then you have to go through Garmin's calibration process to figure out the orientation of the axle. With look, they have a tool that sets the specific axes, which has been, a, uh, I've, I've heard, accurate, but difficult to set up. Another way of measuring force is actually through vibration. Polar did this with the chain, but you can also do this with a number of other things. The idea is, let's, let's imagine a, a bicycle wheel, and you have spokes. And a lot of people have heard of mechanics that tune the spoke tension by plucking them and listening to the frequency. The higher the frequency, the higher the tension. And it's a linear relationship. I've actually experimented with this in various different fields. So what if you were to take a small little piece of metal, create a shape like this, put a very thin ribbon, and put a small known mass on it. And if we put this under a certain amount of tension and we just give it a small little flick, it's going to vibrate. And it's going to vibrate back and forth at what's called the natural frequency, which is going to be a function of this tension and the mass. The mass isn't going to change and the tension is going to be related to the strain force. So if you were to mount this on, let's say, an axle, and you have a force pressing down, this is going to stretch and the tension is going to go up here. And just by the small amounts of movement caused by, and small vibrations caused by just movement, this is going to vibrate. And imagine if you had a small pickup and the, this ran back. This takes no power. If you use a small magnet here, it will oscillate and the more force you put on it, the higher the frequency, so, so it gets very high frequency, and the lower the force, the lower the frequency. And then that can go out to your circuit board and get processed exactly how Garmin Vector does. Now, right now the only picture that they've shown shows four resonant string gauges located here, here, let me just draw little weights on them, here, and one on the opposite side, another amount here, and some sort of pin. This doesn't work as it stands because if I were to produce a moment on this, it would cause a bending deflection. And that bending deflection would appear to be a direct force, but it's not contributing any force. What it's actually doing is causing a curve bending here. The only thing that can cause the correct force is here. Now, Swedish Adrenaline don't currently have a prototype from anything I've seen. They haven't shown a working prototype. They haven't shown a mock-up. There's only this one image shown up in the corner there now. However, they can fix it and they can make this work. It needs more resonant string gauges though. So you'd have to change up the design and put four more resonant string gauges here. I'll color them all in so you know where the masses are. The masses are essentially there for either um, a magnetic material, so it's easier to pick up, so self-power generation, 
Uh, only on the sensor setup, you still need some sort of battery to power the rest of the systems more than likely. But you'd need the differential, you would need a differential setup in order to know what's a perpendicular torque and what is a, a bending moment. The reason I say you need this is because my initial tests using what's called a shear setup works in a similar way. However, a shear setup can only detect this. When I tried it, depending on my pedal offset, I was getting up to 15% error. Hugely inaccurate. This won't work based on my experience. This is identical to Garmin Vector except using a completely new innovative sensing technology. The problem with that is it's very immature. They won't be able to finish development for forty or fifty thousand dollars of such a brand new sensor and the application is not ideal. This definitely has lots of industrial applications, lots of great controls applications, but it's simply going to be too difficult to fit this these inside a pedal and connect them to the outside world where you can have some sort of controller such as the nice Nordic NR51422 that I use. So there you, there you have it. It's a brand new technology. It's really good, but this probably isn't the application for it. It's not going to be easy to develop a whole new sensing technology. Strain gauges, on the other hand, were invented in the 40s and 50s. Very reliable, very simple. By today's standards, they're, they're practically brain dead to implement. This is new, very cool, very hard to develop.